Well, we are here at the Western Film Fair and Nostalgia Convention in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And with me is the youngest child of one of the most beloved mm -hmm. and iconic American families in all of entertainment, and that's Roy Rogers and Dale Evans' youngest daughter, Dodie Rogers. I'm Thank so you. delighted to have met you today. I've heard oh. about you for so long. So nice to meet you, too. And um, you were the youngest child, and I understand that you are adopted. Yes. And there was a little bit of, uh, of question at first about whether that might be allowed. Can you talk about that a little bit? Okay. Um, at the time, Mom and Dad were touring uh, the country after... Uh, okay. <laughs> after Mom and Dad um, lost their child, Robin, they were touring, going on tour across the country, and they stopped in Dallas um, Hope Cottage, where Cheryl, Dad's uh, first child, was born. And they had seen me earlier, some months before, and wanted to know if I was still there and if I was adoptable. And uh, so they went in and uh, dad said he hardly got the car stopped when mom was out the door and up the <laughs> stairs. And um, remembering where I was um, staying, she headed right for the uh, crib mm -hmm. and she had the nurses and the ladies um, running behind her saying, Mrs. Rogers, Mrs. Rogers. And she came and just scooped me up out of the crib. Aww. And the nurses were um, telling her, oh, you can't do that. You can't touch the babies, you know. And she said, oh, well, I want this one. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they said, well, she's spoken for. And uh, someone has taken interest in her, someone in the Dallas area. And the United Way um, sponsored Hope Cottage. So they wanted to keep Dallas um, personnel, uh, people there. Um, that United Way, um, they want to keep them in the area, keep the children. So they said, besides, she has, she's Native American, well, Indian blood, and we prefer, it wasn't a law at that time, mm -hmm. it is now, but um, that she, that um, babies, Native American babies, go to at least one of the parents that has Native American blood. And she said, oh, but dad has Choctaw blood. And they said, oh, well, she's Choctaw too. <laughs> and they said, okay. And uh, they said, but still, we can't just let you have her <laughs> until we've gone through all the formalities. And um, she said, well, you don't understand. You know, I just lost a child and I need her mm -hmm. and she needs me too. Mm -hmm. And so they said, well, Okay, we'll have an emergency meeting, and they called emergency meeting of all the personnel, and um, they said, okay, you know, we'll let you know. And um, so mom and dad continued on the tour, and they were playing in Madison Square. They were playing in Madison Square Gardens when they actually got the um, the word that they could adopt me. Oh. So they were very pleased with that, and. They adopted Sandy on the same tour in Kentucky. So, wow. oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And as I often tell my stepdaughter, who is adopted, you weren't adopted; mm. you were chosen. Yes. <laughs> so I, I mm. love that you weren't just born to us. We picked you, and your parents certainly picked you. That's awesome. Yes, and yes. something happened when you were 15 years old. I about 15. Was that right? Did your parents a lot of things you? happen? Yeah. <laughs> What? Do, Do I, I want to know all of yeah. them? I don't think so. <laughs> um, but your parents introduced you to your My family. My biological, biological family, yeah. yes. Um, she had looked up my biological family, and um, it wasn't an easy job because they don't, they're not, at that time, the law was to keep everything secret, I mean, to not reveal who the biological parents are. But she, she's um, a very determined woman, and <laughs> so she managed to find them and flew my biological grandmother and mother out to meet me. Oh. And um, that was really interesting. Um, it's, it's a long story, but um, the Native American side 
my family, including me, are fairly quiet people, can be very stoic at times. Mm. And so <laughs> if it weren't for my mom, who is not, who is very outgoing and demonstrative, and um, we would probably all be sitting there, you know, just smiling at each <laughs> other. But <laughs> she was able to keep um, all of us and getting to know each other. And um, my mother, mom, Dale, mm -hmm. <laughs> actually found them in my biological mother because she felt that if anything should happen to her, that I would still have a mother. Mm. And, um, but my biological mother actually ended up passing away before uh. Uh, mom, Dale did. Yeah. And, um, but mom and my biological grandmother, Lucy, became best friends and um, what a she story. visited often. And um, I have all that family now, those new family members and um, I've gotten, I got to know my three half brothers. Two of them have passed away, but I have a lot of nieces and nephews. So on that side, so it's been really that's wonderful, fun to get to know them. And what a generous thing for your parents to do yes. to introduce you. You know, I had the joy, like all of us who grew up believing that Roy and Dale were our parents. Um, <laughs> I actually had the joy of getting to know them both, oh, and. Good. Um, I spent a day at the Roy Rogers Museum on a private tour with your mom and dad. The museum was closed that day. Nobody was there oh, but my wow. husband and me. And Roy took me around especially. And if you've ever been to Victorville, it's closed now, but in Victorville, California, the, the Roy Rogers Museum was just amazing. And I saw Trigger and everybody. <laughs> and uh, we had lunch after. It was just great. Oh. And then I had the joy of being on your mother's TV show oh, several times Dave on the Day Dale. 11 show. Oh, so great. So very, very special. She loved that show. So, oh, well, so, so did all of us who got to be with her on that show. And your parents had a, a deep faith. Mm -hmm. And they also were very committed philanthropists and charity-minded. And did that philosophy impact your life as well? Uh, yes, um, it would be hard not to because they always reached out to so many people that um, other people would sometimes forget existed. Mm. Um, mm. Um, all the challenged mm -hmm. mentally, emotionally, um, physically, the abused, mm. the, anyone in hospitals, that was their concern and um, they felt deeply for these for people like that and they just wanted to give back something even if um, just to go in and say that hey I care you know mm -hmm. and so they gave of themselves and they would travel to places like that and um, help support them in some way and um, so yeah wow. it, it's just um, their heart you you feel it mm -hmm. too because it's introduced into your family and um, that's why I think even though not all of us kids are out in the public we still um, are so grateful to have and meet you know the fans and the people that um, they've cared so much about and, yeah. and I see why because I mean it's such it's so nice to be around people like-minded yeah. and, yeah. and what a great legacy they've left you and now you're continuing as the the children. Um, I know a lot of your siblings went into the entertainment world because m most of you kids were on their show yeah. at some point or other. You, you yeah. were on their show starting at two years old, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Um, pretty good. I tell everyone that if you need somebody that cries really good, <laughs> I'm it. <laughs> Because I think that's all I did on that show was oh. cry. But, um, that's yeah, great. that's... Now, you didn't necessarily continue in the entertainment world, although I understand you're a very good singer. Are we going to hear you sing later? Um, I know your husband, John, is a great musician he's and the singer. He's a singer. <laughs> okay. No. Well, we won't talk to you. Okay. But you have another expression of uh, your gifts and talents. You are going about now more and more speaking about your heritage and your family and your background and, and your history. Uh, tell us about that. I think that's so exciting because I know a lot of our audience would love to know that you're available and they'd love to have you come and share. <laughs> I'm available. 
Um, I've spoken, well, I started speaking um, because my brother Dusty and my sister Cheryl were unable to. So I kind of stepped in, not really realizing that I would continue mm -hmm. doing that. But um, I love it. And um, I've spoken at small meetings like the DAR and history. And I found out some more history on my dad's side. And um, I'm still looking up the history of his um, Native American roots, though. Wow. I'm, I'm run into some um, trouble trying to find all of that, but it's all very interesting the more I find. and Yeah, so I guess so. Yeah. And you're also beginning to write more. Your mother was an amazing writer, written several books, and I think you inherited that love of writing from her. <laughs> I, um, like many writers, I think you're an avid reader first, mm -hmm. and since I was little I've always wanted to read. Going to the library was my you know, first choice of doing anything. And um, so as I got older, I continued to take summer classes of writing. Mm. And uh, my mom would actually edit some of the um, stories I would write at home. And she would edit for me. And, um, and then after I got married and had a child, I kind of let that drift. And uh, so I've tried to come back and I'm working on a it started with a biography and then slash autobiography and then I thought well just maybe my memoirs so it's kind of Ooh. I'm not sure what it's going to turn out to be. And but when might we expect to see that? Do you have a That's a good a question. <laughs> <laughs> I need a deadline. Okay. I will impose a deadline Okay. On you. A hard deadline because we want to read it. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Well and you and John, your husband, uh, live on, a, you have a ranch and yes. you've got some horses and I think I heard somewhere that you've got a certain kind of horse, <laughs> and I forgot what color it is and what it's called, <laughs> but what is it? It's a Palomino. Really? <laughs> oh. And what's his well, name? Well, her name, her name is Miss Goldie, oh. and uh, that's her name when we bought her, so I just let her keep it <laughs> so that's good she yeah. she comes to miss gold yeah okay. <laughs> and you also are a woman of many talents besides the writing and the music and the speaking you also enjoy sewing and you do oh. stained glass artwork yes I haven't had a chance to do a lot lately because of the writing mm -hmm. but um, yes I enjoyed stained glass it's so beautiful and to watch them put it together and um, sewing I started in junior high um, home ec, yeah. and my mom had me put in zippers for her and things wow. that um, she didn't want, couldn't take the time to do, so um, I wish I just you'd continued. done my dresses in home ec. <laughs> <laughs> I had a collar, I had a notch collar. What possessed me to do this, I'll never know. I had a notch collar dress and the collar ended up over <laughs> 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 It's like, you would have really helped me out. <laughs> That's great. So, so you still enjoy doing that. Okay, so everybody probably really wants to know too, what are, do you have some favorite memories growing up in the Rogers household? Oh, yes. Um, we had a large ranch in, uh, in California. Yes. I was raised in California until the last 14 years. <laughs> and um, so my dad had a large ranch with horses and cows and lemon groves and orange groves and dogs and cats and you know you name it <laughs> and uh, there were a lot of us under one roof mm -hmm. so <clears throat> excuse me um, we and we all had friends that would come over so it was kind of a uh, active household <laughs> 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 with all of us going everywhere but um, dad used to take us for picnics in Nellieville and um, there would be fallen down um, trees and we would ride the trees like there were horses and um, mom was very strong um, she would like she went for hikes a lot of times and we had these beautiful rocks and she took me all the way up to the um, fence line one time and I was about 11 12 but I was huffing and puffing and she was just you know Marching she was, right yeah it's like okay this is <laughs> this was fun but but um yeah, we, uh, it was uh, good times. and Were you a good horsewoman? <laughs> well, at two, I think I was. No, maybe four. I tried to be on my own. There was a horse <laughs> next to the fence, oh. and I went to put my leg over the horse that was not um, broke. 
Oh, and boy. someone saw me from the window and went hollering to Dale as she went um, hollering, trying to get me off, not to get on there. And mom comes running, and they're both running, and the lady, the help that we had there at the time, just scooped me off the, the fence before I could get on that horse. And it was it, like, what? <laughs> you know, it's a nice horse. But um, I did start riding. Um, when we moved to Apple Valley, it was a place that was, there was a lot of um, areas that you could ride. And all of my friends rode, and we had horses at the stables that if they didn't have their own horse, they could get one there. And so we just went riding all over the place. And we what had a, a lot great of fun. childhood. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And with Roy and Dale. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Mom and Dad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, what's next for you besides your hard deadline on your book <laughs> and traveling and speaking? What, what else is in the wind for you? I don't know. When I was 40, I worked at, um, in a hospital. And my daughter said there, the hospital was having problems. It was going to have to close. Mm. And she said they're uh, doing a... Um, there's a legal course for a paralegal. And she said, let's sign up. And I thought, well, it's, I'm 40 years old. I'm not going to just switch. And, but I had to do something. So I said, OK. And so um, I became a paralegal. And I love that. And I thought, well, why do you have to restrict yourself to any age at starting or stopping anything? You know, just whatever, especially at this age, I can you know, go in whatever direction so I haven't really thought about it. <laughs> good for you. But, what an inspiration. I think that's a good word for all of us. It's never too mm -hmm. late to go down a new, challenging, wonderful experience, a new road. So. How can people find you? Do you have a website? How do you stay in touch with no, folks? No, not, well, I had one, but it was difficult for Facebook me. How about Facebook Yes. <laughs> um, if anybody has ever seen me on Facebook, I'm on there quite regularly <laughs> under Dodie Rogers. And, um, I do have Gmail, um, little ltldoe52 at gmail.com. So, um, and I am working on a um, website. I'm going to have someone do it though, because I'm yeah. not very good. I'm not <laughs> so either. So, I could go in that field. <laughs> you just need to get a seven year old to do that. Oh, yes, <laughs> and I do, I do. I call my grandchildren, you know, That's right. help me. Oh, gosh. Well, it's been an absolute delight to have you here. We are so thank pleased you. that you're here with us oh, on Victory Television too. Network and also at the Western Film Fair. Well, thank you and, so um, much. And I've heard about you for years, and it's just an honor for us to have uh, the daughter of Roy and Dale with us. It's an honor for you to ask me. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Happy trails to you, Dodie. And to you, too.